Good afternoon. My name is Jeff Harmon. I'm a systems engineer for Viavi Solutions, formerly JDSU. This afternoon's presentation is going to be on the ONX 580 covering the systems menu. So looking at my menu tray here, I'm going to touch on system. And it's going to give us a number of tabs down below. It's going to give us system, network, web browser, as well as Stratasync. And I'll go through each one of these. First one we're going to go into is the system menu. So let me click on system here. It'll launch. Many of these will be self-explanatory, such as the date and time. So if you click on the date and time, this is where you can go in and you can set up the date and time and the time zone and things like that for your test set. The next one is remote operation, which is currently what I'm doing right now. So this allows you to control this with VNC Viewer. So if you were going to do a remote session or you were doing some training and things like that, you could set this up using VNC. The next one is Bluetooth. So Bluetooth is an option. And there are a number of devices such as the Wi-Fi advisors that we have that can connect to this Bluetooth and then we have international settings as we go into international settings this is where you can set your country and your language the type of keyboard uh, your measurement system temperature and Fahrenheit again time zone things like that and your cable terminology in the US here we use tip ring ground around the world they use a B in ground so just different ways of doing it but that's where you're gonna make those selections if you want to do a network software update, if you plug into an Ethernet connection that gets you out and you set up a IP address, the URL is already built in as well as the username and password. You can click for software update. When you go to that site, it will actually upgrade your unit if there is a new software update. USB software update. So if you go to our FTP site, you download the firmware and you have it on a USB stick then you can update it through the USB ports having it on your USB stick. The next one is hardware and software revisions. Now there's a lot of information in here. Right now it talks about the software bundle and it's talking about the base as well as the access and right now the current release we have is 4.0.4. The same thing on the access. It tells you the firmware for the Broadcom 63168 DSL chipset. We have our GPB processor. The G stands for Gemini. It was the code name for the test set as we were in development with it. The key thing that you need to have um, is underneath the One Expert DSL. So if we want to upgrade your unit, if we want to put new features on your unit, what we're going to need is we're going to need the unit ID that is contained underneath the One Expert DSL tab. Options. This will give you a list of all the options that are available on your test set and what you are currently optioned for. So if you look at my test set here, I have just about all of the options. I need to add true speed and I need to add the VoIP uh, MOS scores onto mine. Those are upgradable right now. But all of these other options have already been enabled. So that's how you can tell what you have, what you don't have. Calibrations. So there's nothing in here that needs to be calibrated right now. It gives the copper calibration for the timestamp when the copper board was calibrated. You can see it was on 426 2014. Then we have save location. What that means is, is when you want to save something, do you want to save it into the file system? Do you want to save it into a USB stick? Or do you want to save it in both? Right now I have mine set up for both. It's what I always recommend just in case I go to save something and I don't have a USB stick in there. I make sure it gets saved on the unit itself. There's restore factory settings. You know, so if, if something's happening or something's not working right, you can always go in and put everything back to the factory defaults. 
Then we get down to the user information. So as I arrow down to the user information, I have screen power and management. This tells me how long my backlight will turn on. If I'm on battery, my backlight will stay on for 10 minutes. My backlight timeout will kick off in one minute. Or I can tell it, tell power off delay to be never. You know, so you can go in there and you can make those adjustments and things. So your backlight, going back up to the backlight, I'll click on that. That is like your contrast on the unit. Um, so right now I have mine set to 10, which is the brightest and the most contrast. You may find yourself out in the sun. You may need to back that down a little bit, but that's how you adjust the contrast on the unit. Then we come down and we've got a couple more menus. We have user information. So this is where you can go in and you can fill out all the information about yourself, your work group and things like that, your first name, last name, your work group. Every unit that gets sold comes with Stratasync. Stratasync is a cloud-based asset management, test management, server feature. But you have to have a tech ID or user ID, your company name and your Stratasync account ID. And all that information can, can derive from your salesperson who can get you in touch with our Stratasync folks once you purchase your unit to get you hooked up to Stratasync. And then you've got all the stuff about you as a user that's going to have this unit. And the last one down here is the help menu. So if you can't find something or you're not quite sure what's happening, you can go into help and we provide you the numbers for our technical assistance center um, or tax email address or our websites and things like that. So we covered the system tab. We're going to arrow over to network. And this is where you can go in and if you're going to do remote sessions and things like that, you can go in and you can build different static IP or DHCP addresses that you may need when you're out there working in the field. Just as you can see, I already have a IPv4 DHCP client. Right now I'm doing static as I'm connected to my computer and you can see that my network state is up and you can see the IP address, the NetMask gateway and DNS that I already have built in for my static. And it's just a matter of clicking on either one that you want, either a DHCP or a static or whichever ones you want, and putting that check mark there. Okay, web browser. If you have the web feature, you can go into the web browser. And this will allow you to go in and put in your IP address or where you might want to go on the web and actually make sure that you can get out of your network and onto the web. Just a real quick way to do it. Stratasync. Again, Stratasync is a cloud-based system and it's used for asset management or tracking your test set. This is the simplest way that we're going to have to do upgrades and things. So if you go into Stratasync, you'll have your Stratasync account ID, you'll have your tech user ID. Right now my interface is on the Ethernet, has the Stratasync server there and whichever port. And all I have to do is connect to an Ethernet connection, making sure I have an Ethernet connection or an IP connection, press start, and any test results that I save will be uploaded to the cloud. Um, so that you have them for, fu for future reference or your manager can go in and look at them. As well as if there's a software update that can be pushed down to you at the time that you're doing your Stratasync um, session. Job Manager. So Job Manager is pretty self-explanatory. It says if you've gone in and you've saved jobs and what have you on the test set, this is where you can start a new job or if right now I don't have anything saved in there. But if I did, I could go into my job manager and I could look at those results and things that I have saved. File browser. So file browser is if I go in and I store or I make screen captures or save test results and things like that or save configuration. So now you can see some reports and some screenshots that I've done. I can go in there and I can access those. 
the first purple key below the display I have my file options there and if I click on those I can copy I can cut them I can copy them to a USB I can rename it I can delete it I can open it using the F using this four purple keys last but not least is my USB file browser and if we do upgrade your unit say we add RFL to your test set we're gonna send you a link that you're gonna put onto a USB stick you're gonna go into the USB file browser you're gonna find that link on your USB stick and you're actually gonna activate it from there and let the information get downloaded to your test set so this finishes up and covers the system menu if you have any questions my name is Jeff Harmon Again, I'm with Viavi Solutions, and thank you very much, and have a great day.